12 and 3 in those uh, first 15. They've won the last four, in fact, as they get together tonight. A Friday evening in Columbus, temperatures in the low 50s as we get set for faceoff. The officials, referees are Tom Holland, Tyler Harriman, and Timothy Hurlbut tonight. Maryland on the road in red. Ohio State has the white jerseys on. We are off and running. Good wing play, earning the ground ball. That's Cullen Brown, 42 in the white. His dad played in the National Football League with the Pink Buckeyes. Matthew Fritz is taking the draw opposite of Luke Weirman. McGee gets his 11th on the season. He has tallies in seven straight. And Fritz, who is limited in practice this week, well enough to start the proceedings at the faceoff X for the Buckeyes. He's been subbing in for the injured Drew Blanchard. And Maryland struggled up the middle last weekend. Out for number four in Scarlet and Gray. Smith did not have a point mark in the loss to Penn State. Last time out for Ohio State, the Nittany Lions using a 10-3 run to salt that game away. As they scramble for the ensuing faceoff, the ball comes up for Maryland. Long stick midfielder Jack McDonald. Like how Maryland made that a scrum. You saw the adjustment of a jamming technique from Weirman. Didn't allow Fritz to get it out cleanly and his wings. Kelly to be on an island all by himself with time, room, and a clean finish. Number 18 on the campaign for Kelly. And Mark, to your point about Maryland's and attack and ball carriers, the injury obviously to Molliver is impactful in that regard. It really is. And when you take away Logan Wismaskis, Owen Murphy was playing down low. I'd like to see Murphy get some number one. We will see him. We have seen him on the sideline. We saw him going through warm-ups. 2-2 game. Kelly has his fifth multi-goal game of the season. If it's I a Maryland team that's trying to bounce back from a losing effort against Michigan. Michigan beating the Terps for the first time in 11 tries. If he's going to play, Camille, get him in the game now. You've got torched twice by Daniel Kelly. Buckeyes settling. S Smith on the outside. Colby Smith, who has four goal games this season against Rutgers in Denver. The Buckeyes now with the... Used by the NCAA Selection Tournament Committee. RPI, strength of schedule. Final six seconds of the quarter. Weirman, who's been mortal again tonight, comes up with possession for Maryland. Last ditch effort as the horn sounds, ending 15 minutes of play. Ohio State caught up season potentially in program history to be nine and three at this point. Such a balanced offense, such a deep offense. The Penn State Nittany Lions, you mentioned it. They could easily be eight and one with a couple of bounces here and there. Love TJ Malone. Love Jack Trainer. Should be a great one tomorrow night from Panzer. It's a busy, busy Mark Dixon joining me for this Maryland Ohio State matchup. He'll team up with the Jason Ross Jr. tomorrow. Totter, Coach Tillman with a shake of the head. Ohio State the first two, Maryland the next two, Ohio State the last two. DeChico striking for his season opening tally on the extra man. Irksa with room, he buzzed that one high. And he finishes high to high. Kyle Borda, grad student, transfer from Fairfield, a 4-0 student, by the way, in the fall for the Buckeyes. Five different players have tallied. They're sharing the wealth offensively and leading fifth-ranked Maryland by three. So Jacob Schneider did slash on that second penalty for Ohio State on that man down uh, situation. Sheehan, one of the finest sharpshooters you'll find statistically in the nation this year. He's shooting 68%. Cashed in on a couple of goals tonight. It's 6-2, Ohio State's largest lead in the game with a timeout call. As you can tell, wearing a long sleeve on that left leg. When that, Seemed a little gimpy there. Yeah, and when that ball was being exchanged in the alley up there, you could see him kind of grimace, and it looked like he was reaching for the turf. Five unanswered for Ohio State. Beautiful move. Back to the faceoff X. Can Weirman get another possession for Maryland, as he so often does? Yes. The Terps have the ball, a chance to string goals back to back. And for Sheehan, 8-3 Buckeyes. 323 left in the half. At the faceoff X, they scramble for it. 
Matthew Fritz was limited this week in practice. Possession belongs to Maryland. Weirman was hopeful for a flag there. Yeah, I think he was looking for a third violation or maybe a delay a game, but he doesn't get it. And let's let's make notice that Ohio State is without their top faceoff man. Blanchard out again this game. So credit Fritz for really holding his own against arguably the best faceoff man in the country. Blanchard, Fritz, very ginger on that ankle, but if he can set his feet and get that push off, it's not his push off foot, which is good news. Great shot. Weirman has come on strong in the second quarter. Top of the screen, you now see seven face-off wins. He's the second most prolific face-off man in Maryland history. Helping the Terps get back into this game. They're within four with 100 seconds remaining in the half. Murphy leads the champs. In the end, though, Maryland prevailing comfortably. Winning 19-12 in what was a one-goal game. Syracuse back on the board. Maryland within three. Weirman has won eight draws in the second quarter alone. And that 2022 team for Maryland was one of the eight, one for the ages. They could dust you in a second. All of a sudden, a tight game. You're down by two or three goals. Then you look up a, a minute and a half, two minutes later, and all of a sudden you're down by seven. This Maryland team doesn't have that firepower, but look at that grit. Make on. All-American, all-conference. Sheehan with his fourth in the waning stages of the half. As the horn will sound, Ohio State will take a 9-5 lead to the dressing room. You got to love the execution of Ohio State, especially conversation. So young guy uh, has done a great job for us. So he's got good nerves, uh, you know, so I'm confident that he'll get off to a good start here in the third. Coach, what was the message to the team at the halftime? Uh, just, you know, we just kind of cleaned some things up. A lot of self-inflicted wounds. Um, you know, just some things that I think we play a little smarter. Um, it's a great group of guys. Uh, I love them to death. Uh, I just feel like we're at times maybe beating ourselves and creating some opportunities when, listen, you play league games, everybody's really good, and they're going to create opportunities. Uh, we just can't help them. Um, so just wanted to take a deep breath, go back to doing simple things well, be fundamentally solid, right? And, and let's get back on the same page because I feel like we're a little disjointed at times. John, thanks very much. We appreciate the knowledge. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. Getting set for the uh, opening draw of the third quarter. You see the numbers uh, for the two draw men on the season. And again, tonight, Weirman started slowly, but at his usual, he comes on as the game grows along. Yeah, he's starting to heat up, and Maryland needs him in a big, big way. Wing play will be critical as well. And that's a really tough ground ball picked up by Daniel Kelly. Squirts it out to Geppert. So the Terrapins, a much needed possession to start the second. Helper earlier in the season in a setback to Loyola. Off this draw, whistles. And possession for Maryland and Luke Weirman. This ball did not come out of the stick of Fritz. Can no longer play with the ball in the back of your stick as a faceoff man beyond one step. Fritz had two face-off violations there in the first half, almost a third. That's wiped clean at halftime. That eagle had two hands on his stick. Nudges the stick up, the hands are on the back, inside roll goal. Spanos with tallies in four straight games. Maryland with the ball, knocking on the door to make this a one-goal game now with plenty of time. This are so deadly against the defense. Credit McGee for getting it to Myers, and Myers being a big boy getting in front of the cage. Weirman wins the draw, goes right to the cooker for Maryland. McDonald, the long stick midfielder, will drag it away. They'll settle in six on six. Notre Dame, the only team to blank Jack Myers this season. Whittier looks for the trailer, that's Syracuse. Spanos job has to recoil to recheck him and shoots it during that interim. Another big draw. Weirman wins it, getting the better of Hogan. Maryland piling up the possessions now, thanks to their outstanding faceoff midfielder. The chance to move within one. Buckeyes holding on for dear life in front of a standing room only crowd tonight at the Ohio State Lacrosse Stadium in Columbus in Columbia, Maryland, and there's Tyler Murphy, the flagpole dedicated to him, a friend.
of the Ohio State program on Nick Meyer's coaching staff died in a car accident. Both of them just really lived for Buckeye lacrosse, loved it. Tremendous energy, tremendous support of this Ohio State program. Coach Myers said of Murphy that he was uh, on the staff at a time when they were building a culture together here. Tighten things up in that quarter. You know, they didn't make as many defensive mistakes, but they also enjoyed the lion's share of possession as Luke Weirman continues to be dominant at the faceoff dot. Graphic showed you the Buckeyes unblemished when leading after three this season. Five and five, Ohio State in the red overall. Six and three, Maryland. Heading into play, both of these teams in the conference with one and one marks. Ohio State's next game at Johns Hopkins. It's Saturday at Homewood. The Buckeyes are 0-3 and in Easy finish for 45. Kelly came into the night tied for first in the goal scoring department for the Terps. The dominant Weirman gets another draw for Maryland. Weirman who started slowly. If you've been with us throughout this game, Weirman was on the wrong end of uh, a number of faceoffs at the outset. And he has been state. And now five against the defending national champs who are ranked fifth in the land, trying to avoid back-to-back -back losses. Maryland bested by Michigan last weekend. Luke Weirman has been a vital cog in this comeback, and he comes up with another face-off win. Well, how about the second midfield tonight for this Maryland team? Zach Whittier, two goals and an assist on this play. Beautiful job keeping the ball alive, preventing Ohio State for picking up the ground ball. Then we get the offense settled for the Terrapins and Daniel Kelly. Schneider goes after Irksa as the defender falls down and nobody accounts for number 45 in red. Broken play that Kelly scores on and that's an opportunity the Terps had to take advantage of. Three different four goal games this season for Daniel Kelly. He had four against Loyola, four against Syracuse, four tonight. This game dead even for the first time since a 2-2 draw early in the opening quarter. Referees are huddling right around midfield. I'm not sure what this conference is about. There was no flags. Didn't look to be any extracurriculars. I mean, this, this game, they're chirping at one another. That There's no doubt. There's some jawing going on. First ever meeting between these two schools in 1990. John Tillman and the Terrapins in their 98th season of Maryland men's lacrosse. Facing a Buckeyes team that's five and one at home in a brand new stadium. And if you're Ohio State, you've got to find some way somehow to win this game. I mean, to be up by four at halftime, at home, prime time, under the lights, great crowd, all, all are behind you. You don't want this one to slip away. Fritz against Weirman at the faceoff X. Once the officials have a little conversation, though, with the two bench bosses. See Maryland long stick midfielder John Geppert eavesdropping on that conversation. We're trying to learn what this is about. But this is game management by referee Tom Holland. Obviously, there's a situation. He's getting the two coaches together to talk about it. And Nick Myers is not happy. He's the more animated of the two listening in. Myers, and remember, th th these, are two, these are two teams. These are programs that have had some bad blood between them. Remember the end of the... 27, excuse me, 2017 Big Ten final. After that handshake line, things got crazy. And Nick Myers is barking at the Maryland bench. Specifically, it looked like it was Dante Trader, number five in red being held back now. Nick Myers is not happy. The With verbal jousting continues. So reading between the lines, you saw Tom Holland have a conversation with John Tillman. I'm going to guess that John Tillman said something. 
Oh wow. So it's the face off man you see enter the picture Matt Fritz. An apparent equipment violation. They're saying that Fritz has the wrong colored gloves on. Maryland earlier this year called a stick check on the Princeton faceoff man after he scored a goal. And they were right. It was an illegal stick. The goal was wiped off of the board. And the penalty was three minutes non-releasable. I have no problem with that. The colors of the glove, come on. That's ticky-tack. That is ridiculous. Color of the glove does not give you an advantage. This is silly. And now they're calling for a stick check. Stick check. Oh, wow. To reset for you with 2.09 left. Maryland has picked itself up off the mat. Okay, so wait a minute. Tied the game. It was Ohio State that called the stick check stick on Luke check Weirman. On Weirman. Sure, after the glove violation. No, 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 called. Joe, I thought it was on Fritz. I okay. thought the stick check was on Fritz, so I want to be clear to our audience right. that that was not the John The glove Tillman. check, though, is Fritz. Absolutely. The stick check in response right. was on Weirman. Of course. I don't think we made that clear, though. I know I did. And Nick Myers is hot. He is hot. Maryland has poked a bear here with this glove color situation. The glove violation that was called against Coach Myers' face-off man, Fritz, will award the ball to Maryland. So it's an illegal procedure. It's not a time-serving penalty, but it's a dead ball illegal procedure. And credit Luke Weirman for having a legal stick. Whittier on the move. On a night when the Terps have not had Owen Murphy at even strength. He subbed in occasionally, has scored an extra man goal. The others in that second midfield unit have risen up. Matt, uh, Mark, you don't see any illegal markings or cutouts or anything that's going to no. make the gloves themselves illegal other than the color scheme. Absolutely. And I'll be honest with you, Joe, I'm going to have to look at the rule book. That's the first time I've ever seen this called in a Division I men's lacrosse game. It gave Maryland this possession and a chance. The terrific decision that they authored at Clockner in Charlottesville when they took down then number one Virginia 14-13. The loss in OT in three overtimes to Notre Dame for the Terps 13-12. Pretty good way to spend a Friday night my friend. I'm telling you this is wow. It it is a rule Joe. It is a rule. I'm just surprised that uh, oh, I'm just surprised. That's all. So here's the draw. Weirman backs away. The officials are alerted to the fact that there was a problem with Fritz's gloves on the left side. That's where he went to the dot in those gloves to the left. He switched to the gray on the right. Coach Myers says, all right, we're going to play that game. Let's stick check Luke Weirman. This was all in the aftermath of the 11-11 goal from Daniel Kelly. And this unfortunately has overshadowed a really intense, well-played, physical, Big Ten lacrosse battle. And you can better believe John Tillman was probably sitting on that for a good part of the game and called for it at a critical juncture, knowing what the outcome could have been and what was eventually. Fritz, who's been subbing in for Drew Blanchard, who's missed the last three games now. First possession in the overtime. First goal wins it. It's first possession for Maryland. Geppert breezing ahead. Another gigantic play by number 20 in red. 
Second midfield unit, Joe, checking in for the Terps. They're riding with who's gotten them to this point. Spanos, Whittier, Syracusa. Shaded by Camille. Syracusa who favors his left hand. Spanos looking over the top at six foot five. Irksa the freshman covered up by Jacob Snyder. Irksa has him hung up. Wallen forces it. Gets back to the goal quickly. Irksa on the move. Fires, he scores! It's the freshman who gives Maryland the overtime decision. Freshman delivers. Braden Irksa. His first goal of the game is the biggest. A gutsy effort from the fifth ranked Terrapins, who trailed at one point in this game 8 3 in the second quarter. Nothing to hang your heads about if you're Ohio State. The Buckeyes, though, let the national champions inch back into the game. The compete level was there for both sides. It boiled over late in the fourth quarter. And it is Maryland showing its championship medal, gutting out a decision in overtime on the road in a place where Ohio State has performed beautifully this season. Well, I think now we're seeing personnel from both teams managing the emotions of the team before they go through the handshake line. This is the athleticism of Walland and what he can do. He comes out, he forces the issue, but you throw off the rhythm of your defender a little bit. And you can see Schneider really never got his feet back under him after that little exchange. Erksa recognizes it, runs right at him, gets him on his heels, comes around, and scores. No slide, because the one-on-one -on -one defense against Erksa tonight has been terrific, mostly from Bobby Van Buren, but Schneider gets the assignment, gets his legs crossed up, and Erksa delivers the dagger. Through the handshake line, Erksa, the freshman, with tallies in four of his last five games. Bringing the curtain down on what was a fabulous Friday night game between Ohio State and Maryland. The Terps will get their minds set on a trip to Piscataway. They'll see Rutgers on Sunday. Ohio State next up at Johns Hopkins on Saturday. In the aftermath, Maryland head coach John Tillman joins us. Coach, as best you can describe, what was the issue at hand late in regulation after the 11-11 goal? Yeah, there was, um, the game was going on and, and somebody had mentioned, I can't remember who it was, they were like, hey, why are they using different gloves? And I was like, that is a good question. Um, so I just asked the ref, I go, hey, just a quick question. Um, don't they all have to use the same gloves? And, and I just asked the question that. Um, and then I left it at that. And he's like, do you want a stick or a glove check? I go, no. I go, I'm not asking for a glove check. I'm just asking a question. Um, and then those guys met and they made a decision. So um, I didn't ask for anything. I didn't say, hey, we do got to do this or that. And then I don't know. I was kind of disappointed by like what happened because people didn't have the facts of what happened. All I did was ask the question during the game. I'm going to ask officials. Hey, was that a push? Hey, what about that? Like we have conversations and that was just one thing that came up and um, they made their decision. Like that's not for me to decide. I asked them a couple things like about some picks and things like that during the game. I'm, I'm always going to have those conversations. All coaches do. Coach, uh, big comeback win. Gut check time for for the Maryland Terrapins. What does this mean? Win? What does this mean? Win mean to your program? 
Uh, I mean, we didn't play great. Um, you know, just I, I loved our fight. Um, I loved what we did at halftime, just catching our breath and the guys sticking together. Um, so that was good. Um, just got a lot of work to do. Uh, a lot of self-inflicted wounds, as we talked about at halftime. Uh, but that's us right now. We got a lot of young guys playing, uh, a lot of new guys playing. Uh, listen, uh, just Zach Whittier, Ryan Saracusa tonight, uh, Bray Nurksa. You know, those guys weren't playing for us last year. Uh, Eric Spanos and all those guys had major, major contributions, um, and we really needed them. And, uh, you know, obviously a little better second half defensively, which was good. Um, so I just loved our fight. Um, again, for our group, it's going to be hard this year. We got so many new guys, um, but we should be scared of heart. You know, nothing nothing good is easy, so we just got to keep fighting and scrapping, and I'm proud of our guys. It's tough to win on the road. John, thanks very much. We appreciate it. You got it. Thanks, guys. The Maryland Terrapins, a dramatic come.